An investigation by the Justice Department has found that Yale University illegally discriminated against Asian American and white students who were applying to the school. The department found that race is the, quote, determinative factor in hundreds of admissions decisions each year. The Supreme Court has ruled that universities may consider race in admissions, but must do so in a narrow, tailored way to promote diversity. And here now to help us understand more is Mike Gonzalez. He is the senior fellow at the Douglas and Sarah Allison Center for Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. He's also the author of a new book, The Plot to Change America, How Identity Politics is Dividing the Land of the Free. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Uh, the Justice Department says that Yale must agree in the next two weeks to change its admissions process. The president of the university so far is saying the school will not not change. Where do you see all this headed? Well, I'm afraid it might have to be the courts. Uh, this a Harvard case also, also having to do with Asian Americans that is also headed for the courts. I think eventually <clears throat> the Supreme Court will have to strike down uh, all, all matters of racial preferences, not just in university admissions, but in contracting, in hiring, uh, in, in, in housing, in everything. What we have been, what we have seen over the last three or four decades, is the emergence of a rival constitution, that is at, at variance with the Constitution of 1787, which and, and, and the ideas of equal protection under the law. So this is going to have to be resolved by the courts, if unless Yale, uh, even but even if Yale agrees, the Harvard case will eventually end up in the courts as well. Mm. Do you think a lot of school are, schools are operating in a similar fashion to Yale and making race the determinative factor in admission decisions, or is Yale more of an outlier? I think all of society is. I think every, especially in the summer of 2020, you know, we've had a, a, a real uh, revolt here in, in terms of what the media has cho uh, chosen to show us. Obviously, the, the very tragic death of George Floyd has, has uh, touched off protests and, 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 and riots, many of, many of which were orchestrated. And our leaders are trying to show, desperate to show uh, good faith and good intentions. And so I think that the Justice Department, by, by taking a step against uh, this, this, this idea that we have to make all decisions in life uh, with regards with, with, by, by weighing race, is it, something that is going to have to eventually end up in the courts. We at the United States cannot continue like this. These things are unconstitutional. The reason I wrote my book, The Plot to Change America, is precisely because of this. This one quote by Assistant Attorney General Eric Dryband uh, last week when he says, unlawfully dividing Americans into racial and ethnic blocks fosters stereotypes, bitterness, and divisions. That is, ex Dryband has it exactly right. And that is the reason I wrote my book, The Plot to Change America. Yeah, so it's so fascinating because, of course, uh you know, you can say everyone in this country wants everyone to have equal treatment. And so if if the way we've been doing it is not working, what do you think is the best way? And specifically with regards to admissions processes, how can colleges do it better? Well, the law or any in, any entity that uses uh, taxpayer money, that is practically every university in the country, has to has to give us equal treatment, has to treat every American equally has to be colorblind. That's what the Constitution and the 14th Amendment called for. That is what Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act uh, calls for. Uh, we, we have done the opposite. Uh, soon after ending legal uh, segregation and legal discrimination and flagrant segregation uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, we moved right away into doing the opposite, into, into doing the same thing, actually. Again, using race as a factor in decisions in everyday life, uh, this this cannot this is this is this should be found illegal by the Supreme Court. Well, it is really fascinating, and um, I know it's going to be a long time uh, trying to make this right. But uh, for now, thank you for your insights, Mike Gonzalez.